If you cast your mind back to when you first started photography, can you remember what it felt like when you picked up a camera and you left the house and it felt like every single time that you returned home, you got this noticeably bit better as a photographer. But maybe after six months, maybe it was a year, maybe it was two years, you felt like you just hit this wall that you couldn't break past, but there was clearly other people out there taking better pictures than you, so you knew it was possible, but you just didn't seem to know how to get any better. Now, if that is you, because that was definitely me for the last couple of years, I've been applying just three minutes before I go out and do a photo shoot or a photo walk or a trip somewhere that has been moving my photography on so, so quickly that I really wanted to share it with you. Now, it might sound really silly, but we're going to do two things. First of all, we're going to review our own work. And then second of all, we're going to review the work of somebody that we like. Now, it seems really obvious that reviewing your own work is super important, but as hobbyists as many of us are, we rarely ever actually sit and do it. Now, I wanna make this quick, concise. I don't wanna spend ages doing it. So we're gonna put just 90 seconds on a timer, load up our previous photo shoot or photo walk, whatever it is that you do, and criticize them as much as you can in just 90 seconds. Now, for me, I originally recorded this video out in London and the audio went completely wrong, so I'm having to re-record it now. But for me, the previous trip that I'd been on was a trip to Venice. So over 90 seconds, I loaded up those images and this is what I found. Now, first of all, going to my favorite image of the trip, which was this one. If you've been here before, you're gonna have seen it before because I've not stopped going on about it, but there was something clearly wrong with this image. I somehow managed to frame the main subject in the background behind an element in the foreground. That tower is hidden behind that wooden pole. Looking through the rest of my images, this theme continues where I just got so excited because I knew the image was good that I just didn't focus up. Lots of images, I didn't focus on getting the lines straight to the point that when I cropped it in post, some of the subjects got very, very close to the edge. It's important as well to talk about the things that we do like. I really like the lighting, and I think I did a pretty good job at finding like subjects in my images as well. Now, reviewing your own work doesn't have to be painful. Just try and keep it to this 90 seconds of like intent focus. Then what you're gonna do is reset that 90 second timer and have a look at the work of somebody that you like. Now, I don't just mean go and have a look at their pictures and say, I like that picture. I mean, actually think about it. What is it that you like about their photography? Now for me, when I was in London, the person I used for this was a guy called Hunter Hart. He's a good friend of mine. He's got a YouTube channel and an Instagram. Both of them are down in the description, but we're gonna actually focus on looking at his Instagram. In 90 seconds of looking through his Instagram, these were the things that I noted down. His use of color is really, really good. These are multiple different shoots all the way down his page, but they have a very coherent look. But there is one thing that really stands out to me, and that is his use of environmental framing. He uses the environment to frame his subjects, and he is exceptionally good at this. So just having reviewed my own work for a minute and a half, and the work of someone else for a minute and a half, I decided that for my day trip in London, I was going to focus on subjects and environmental framing. That was it. That was all I did for three minutes, but it makes a massive difference to my day. Now, typically I would have turned up in London, I'd have probably done a little bit of research on some locations to where to go, and that would have been about it. But now I have this extra layer of intentionality. I was gonna do environmental framing, something I know I'm not very good at and something that I like the look of because I've seen it before, there's somebody else doing it, and then also focusing in on the things I wasn't so good at, having definitive subjects and checking that my lines were just that little bit straighter. This extra level of intentionality has been the bit that has been transforming my photography. And the best part of all of this, as I started, I was terrible at it, like actually so bad at it. Some of these images that I took near the start are genuinely just terrible photos. But what it was doing was just making me think. And if you're not having to think or it feels very easy, then probably pick something else to do. The whole point of this process is it should feel a little bit uncomfortable and a little bit difficult. One thing that I was really enjoying from this experience was the whole environmental framing element. I was in London walking down the embankment for the majority of my trip, and I've been here so many times before, but I have never been here looking for like weird frames in the environment. And it meant that somewhere I'd walked many, many times before felt completely new. I've had a similar experience recently when I did some macro photography. Again, something I very rarely do, and I did macro photography in my garden, somewhere I've been literally like thousands of times, and it just felt like I was in this new world. And this kind of environmental framing experience felt very, very similar. This was also my first day with the GRX3. And I think this actually helped me on the day because it has a fixed focal length. I didn't have to think about anything other than what I was trying to do in terms of having subjects 
and that environmental framing. That like simplicity added to the ease of me just focusing on exactly what I was there to do. As the day progressed on, I found my images getting slightly, slightly better. And this led to this feeling of fun because you know what? Learning things is something that makes you feel good. And because you're feeling good and you're enjoying yourself, it makes you want to do more of it. And some of these images that I started to take towards the end of the day, predominantly end of the day, to be honest, started to actually turn into images that I really quite liked. And as I'm sat here now recording it, this London trip was probably two or three weeks ago at this point, and this experience has genuinely stuck with me. I find myself even now, more recently, still looking for environmental frames in places that I frequently visit, and it has been definitely improving my photography. I think for many of us, we just completely forget, especially the hobbyists among us, that reviewing our own work is important. And I think there's also this like misconception that if you want to sit down and review your work, you need to sit and do it for hours and it needs to be a painful process. Now, I've genuinely been finding just spending three minutes before I go out and shoot has been genuinely transforming my photography because it just adds this level of purpose and intentionality to just the simplest of trips. And don't get me wrong, sometimes I do this and it is absolutely terrible but at the same time, I'm having fun and I can feel myself progressing. If you've enjoyed this video though, guys, please do not forget to like and subscribe. There's plenty more content like this coming. I'm gonna do a little bit more like this, maybe talking about photography and educational content, as well as just talking about cameras. If you wanna see some more images from London, I did take the M11 out for a trip last year. You can find that here, but hopefully guys, I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching, cheers.